Welcome to Bangkok, a city of stark contrasts and ceaseless activity. With over 22 million international visitors annually, it consistently ranks among the top global destinations, even surpassing cities like Paris, London, and Dubai at times. The reason becomes apparent quickly. Bangkok's vibrant street life, cultural treasures, culinary delights, and red light districts create a multi-layered city brimming with hidden secrets waiting to be uncovered. Yet beneath the glittering surface of this city, many of its buildings serve as the lifeblood of the renowned Thai gemstone and jewelry industry. This fact may come as a surprise to many consumers worldwide, but a significant portion of the jewelry found in the United States, the European Union, the Middle East, Hong Kong and Japan is produced right here in Bangkok, often referred to as the stone capital of the world. While colorful gemstones like sapphires, rubies and emeralds may shine brilliantly, the story behind these precious stones is far less glamorous. The global market for rough colored gemstones, a term describing uncut and polished stones, is estimated to be worth around $20 billion. However, the gemstone supply chain is a prime example of unequal distribution, with those at the beginning of the chain earning significantly less than those further along. These gemstones are typically extracted in the world's poorest developing countries, and then processed in countries like Thailand, India, Sri Lanka, and China, where they are cut and polished. The finished products are eventually sold in wealthy Western markets. Bangkok streets hide a network of Asian and African gemstone traders who fuel a clandestine trade that often skirts the law while providing livelihoods for millions on both sides of the Indian Ocean. Thailand, known as the Ruby Trading Kingdom, is a major hub for processing colored gemstones, renowned for its expertise in polishing and craftsmanship. These skills, often done by hand, cannot be easily replaced by automated machinery. However, Thailand's gemstone industry heavily relies on rough-colored gemstones from Africa, a trade that is often underreported due to its secretive nature. For instance, Madagascar is a significant source of sapphires and other gemstones supplied to the Thai industry for over two decades, while this island nation holds vast deposits of precious and semi-precious gemstones. It is estimated that only 10% of its land is in gem-bearing. Despite this wealth, the country was only recently included in official Thai trade records. The sapphire trade in Madagascar is primarily controlled by foreign buyers, particularly Sri Lankans, who show little interest in adding value to the country's stones. It's believed that these traders maintain a cartel system to keep local prices low, maximizing their profits. The Thai gemstone industry faced a disruption when Mozambique, a major ruby producer, launched an offensive against illegal mining and trading gemstones in 2017, resulting in the arrest of numerous foreign buyers. This crackdown caused a scarcity of rubies in the Thai market. In addition, the OECD's due diligence guidance highlights the trade in rough green, pink, and dual-colored tourmaline stones from the Democratic Republic of Congo, which are purchased in Rwanda before making their way to Bangkok. Thai dealers have a history of directly owning mines in Africa and dealing with local miners, although they increasingly rely on intermediary traders, often African or Indian nationals. Thailand has a liberal policy on the import of colored gemstone rough, with no strict requirements for provenance, acquisition methods, or export royalties at customs. This attitude is driven by the economic importance of the gemstone industry which provides over a million jobs in Thailand. However, the Thai industry faces growing competition from other gemstone hubs like Hong Kong and Jaipur, India. India, the world's second largest global importer of colored gemstones, also plays a significant role in the African colored gemstone sector. Indian residents in countries like Zambia and Madagascar, who engage in trading and manufacturing, strengthen India's ties to the African gemstone market. Tanzania is known for its Tanzanite, a rare gemstone found exclusively in this country. Despite its unique position, Tanzania lags behind India and Kenya in exports due to smuggling activities. The informal nature of the colored gemstone trade, 
along with the difficulty in valuing rough stones at the extraction site, provides opportunities for criminal and corrupt actors to exploit source countries. This leads to a lack of secure supply chains, dangerous working conditions, child labor, discrimination against women, and neglect of mined areas. Smuggling poses a significant challenge to establishing fair and sustainable livelihoods for miners and others in the industry. It ultimately robs Africa of the potential economic benefits of the gemstone sector. Trade data from countries like Nigeria, Rwanda, Madagascar, and Mozambique fall far short of expectations, indicating substantial smuggling. The lack of transparency in the colored gemstone trade is evident when comparing official trade data to estimated values. This multi-billion dollar industry operates largely in the shadows, with even more concerning reporting gaps and discrepancies in Sri Lanka's trade figures. The transnational networks underpinning the global colored gemstone trade remain largely hidden, leading to little attention compared to other precious minerals like gold and diamonds. In the 1990s, Campaigns surrounding blood diamonds led to the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme to prevent conflict diamonds from entering the mainstream diamond market. However, colored gemstone supply chains and their often illicit networks between source and destination countries remain largely unexamined.